Hello, I'm Greg Cheney, and I'm taking part in the uh, Openers Open Challenge. But uh, my story is probably pretty different than a lot of people. The reason I got into this was uh, originally my dad, uh, I, we buried my dad up in Seward, Alaska. And uh, the problem with that area is it's really hard to um, hire grave diggers. And so for some reason, uh, the, nobody would dig a grave, so they, so I ended up doing it, and so I felt kind of a lot of uh, attachment to that grave site. And then uh, when I saw the stone they put in, it was, it was okay, but it was a little plain, you know, and uh, looking around the graveyard, there were some others that were like little monuments. So I started looking around, and I noticed that the best old monuments, and there's, you know, hundreds, there are hundred-year-old graves there, we're all cast brass or bronze. Um, the stones all, you know, after a while they start kind of getting worn out and stuff. So I decided I would want to, you know, make cast a nice uh, gravestone for my dad. Well, that sounded easy, right? Um, <laughs> turned out not so easy. So I, I started watching a lot of uh, YouTube videos and came across uh, SW Dweeb's uh, site and saw the um, Openers open challenge and I thought well, you know, that's a good way to start working up to this get get some of my gear together it has me a gives me a little bit of a uh, Goal to work towards so I have this cabin out on Shelter Island. It's uh, outside of Juneau, Alaska and uh, if you can look across the channel you see Admiralty Island that has the largest concentration of brown bears in the world. So uh, It's a long ways off the road system and it's a long ways uh, you know, in, it's in the wilderness. Our nearest neighbor's uh, pretty far away, so it's it's a wilderness setting, and it, it seemed like the perfect place to, to work on this challenge. But, you know, as far as my challenge goes, I wanted to do something that was very organic, like local, locally done. So I figured I'd get sand off the beach, maybe use my old chainsaw for some aluminum parts to, uh, you know, for melting the metal for the challenge, and um, so I, you know, started scooping sand off the beach. Uh, unfortunately, it's really rough. That sand is, I don't know, uh, kind of a mistake probably to use it. And I decided to uh, build a furnace from local rocks. Now there's a lot of rocks in the area, so I figured uh, I built uh, a bake oven out of uh, stones from the beach. So furnace seemed like it would be the next logical thing. And um, Decided to use wood for the fuel for the furnace. Uh, haven't seen that on YouTube before. The, the thing about wood is, at first I was like, well, nobody else is using it, must not work. But then I started reading these old accounts from back in the, you know, the early medieval times. They used wood to, to run their furnaces. Uh, charcoal is an option, but it wasn't necessarily the, the thing that most people did. So, so I felt okay with uh, using wood, at least giving it a shot. Uh, there's a thing called a reverbery furnace or something like that. It has lots of, um, it uses wood for fuel and it's a traditional uh, medieval smelting system. So I, I knew it probably work. Um, for, for the air supply, uh, I just use an old hair dryer. Uh, fortunately, I have set up a lot of solar panels here. So, and I have a micro hydroelectric system that I built. So I have electricity. It's actually probably the most unusual thing that's a local resource. And so then I, um, I built a mold and I was ramming up the mold and that boy, that was a tough one because uh, you could tell the sand wasn't sticking together very well. So I, I dug around in the, in the dirt. I found some clay and some soil that was kind of sticky. I, I mixed that all in, spent a lot of time and uh, you know, just was doing a good job ramming it up. Uh, way more than Perry even rams. But guess what? It, uh, uh, it was very discouraging. Very discouraging. I just rammed up my first setup with the with the sand, and uh, didn't work. <laughs> uh, I guess I didn't put enough clay in it, so uh, that was a complete complete washout. I'm, I'm decided what the heck. I'm going to go ahead and still cast something today. So I had a, a steel crucible made of an old bucket, uh, kind of a novelty bucket made out of steel. Steel's got a way higher melting temperature than aluminum, so it worked fine, right? So I put it in the furnace, and 
put some uh, some scraps of aluminum in there. It's surprising. I, I thought it had a lot of scraps of aluminum from old building projects and stuff. It didn't really add up to much. Uh, a bunch of in, in cores of a couple of old doorknobs that didn't work out and a couple of scrap uh, bits of aluminum. Anyway, it, it's, uh, it was surprising how little aluminum was in that pot, even though I took up all, all the scrap I could find around the place. And uh, I was watching it in a great fire and coals, you know, when it melted down to the coals, you could really tell it was cooking. And then something weird happened. The, the level of the molten aluminum started dropping and dropping and guess what? It totally melted the bucket. Ah, so I have to order a crucible. So uh, we got a crucible. Even Amazon dry, delivers up here. Oh, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm starting to drift. I'm drifting away from the original mission. But um, what I found was, uh, and I, then of course I got a crucible now, so I need to make something to lift the crucible out of the fire, the furnace with, and then I needed to get uh, something to, to lift it up and pour with. So I decided to make them out of um, three quarter inch rebar. Uh, it was pretty hard to bend this stuff. Um, I actually, I didn't, it didn't take a video of it, I should. I, I clamped it in my vise and was hammering it with a, with a sledgehammer, five pound sledgehammer. So that was fun. <laughs> Finally got it, it worked out pretty good though. Uh, and it was cheap, that was a good one, it was cheap. Uh, not as, the crucible was not cheap. So, and then, in order to fix my, my clay situation, uh, I, I read on the internet, uh, kitty litter full of clay. Now this is the cheapest kitty litter. I read the ingredients. It's just bentonite clay. So there you go. One more thing. Not really local, but not too expensive. So maybe that's my new goal. Not local, but not too expensive. I got to say, mixing up the sand and kitty litter is a very slow process. Um, it's kind of mysterious. I think it's a little bit like dancing. You can't just watch a video about it and then do it because I would mix it up and I'd squeeze it and put a little water in and get it all nice and then see if it would hold together right and try to get the consistency right. I don't know. I've been watching uh, YouTube, uh, especially uh, Paul, Paul's Garage and uh, SW Dweeb and they're both stressing this uh, tapered sprue. So gosh, got the old question of what comes first, the sprue or the sprue former? Well, uh, in my case, it was a sprue former because I didn't have a sprue and I uh, made it in a mold out of Plaster Paris. And so at least I knew the Plaster Paris would hold up. And uh, unlike, it's not a lost wax casting. I just inserted uh, a tapered object into the, kind of like a carrot shape, into the, uh, in the Plaster Paris, let it harden and then just pulled it out because it was, uh, you know, it was tapered, it had a lot of, uh, no, I forgot the term, but anyway, it, it pulled out real easy and I ended up making the rest of the mold out of plaster of Paris. But I was able to pour the sprue former. It was wild when I poured it, there was all these bubbles coming out and the bubbles turned out to be steam. And I realized that the, I skipped a step because when you do plaster of Paris, usually you bake it because you're baking out the wax. But since I didn't put anything in there, I didn't I need to bake anything out. So when I poured the aluminum in there, it started giving this misty mist. Uh, like it was um, misty mist, it was, uh, there was steaming. That was it. It was little bubbles were coming up in the aluminum. So I was a little worried it wasn't gonna work.
it is. Thy sprue, sprue former. A little rough. So anyway, for the opener's open, I decided to do something uh, local once again. This time I decided to use a, a jaw that I found on the beach nearby so that I could use that for uh, a bottle opener. I, you know, I'm sure there's something, some aspect of this jaw that would work for, for a bottle opener. So that, that would be pretty cool. So I spent all this time carefully ramming up my jawbone, or not my jawbone, <laughs> ramming up a jawbone. And then guess what? It collapsed again. Ah. So what I'm really realizing is that if you don't have sand and you're trying to do sand casting, you don't have much. Even though I was able to do the melted aluminum and I've got I, I, everything else, but without sand, I'm really in trouble. So I might have to do the worst thing of all, buy sand and bring it to the beach. Uh, so then I decided, okay, wait a minute. We're just gonna do open face casting now. So I'm just gonna put this jawbone in here, ram it up really tight and pull out the jawbone and it'll be, uh, it'll, it won't be very good because it'll be open face, but it, you know, it'll still work. I mean, hey, this is the opener's open challenge. It's not the Olympics. You know, I spent like, I don't know, a good hour ramming this jawbone up. It's a complicated shape. And I want to make sure to get all the teeth details and everything just right. And uh, so since I knew that open face casting wasn't going to be very good, I decided to do something that actually would work. Uh, a, I, I carve a lot of stone. That's something else, a hobby I did a little while ago. And I had this nicely carved Celtic knot. And I thought, you know what? Uh, I know the old days they used to use uh, stone molds for you know making like copper axes and stuff. So what I'll do is I'll take this stone uh, carving of a Celtic knot and then I'll pour the aluminum over it, and at least I'll have a Celtic knot. It'll be cool. It won't open a bottle, but it's my, you know, at least it's something that works. You know, I'm kind of desperate. Well, guess what? Uh, <sighs> the other thing I realized, you know, going back to the very beginning of this, if I had just decided to carve a tombstone for my dad, I would have been done by now. <laughs> this, this metal casting's way more complicated. I heated the metal up again, but this time I'm like recycling all of these old failures of aluminum and there's lots of dross. I mean, when I was, I was scooping the dross out, I can feel rocks inside <laughs> of melted aluminum. So that wasn't very good. Uh, and I, and I just ended up with lots of, lots of dross. I lost lots of my metal. I, I was way shorter than I should have been. I would describe what you were doing, except I don't really know. What? So I would describe what you're doing, except I don't really know. Well, say whatever you want. <laughs> so should I take a picture of what's in, in there? I'm walking towards you. I'm behind you. Okay. Walking towards you. See very hot fire down in there. Okay. Wait, wait. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. I'm trying to catch up to you. Here, wait. I want to show what's in there. Okay, hang on. Let me get in a better spot. I don't want to be too close. Okay, pour away. When I poured the metal into the stone, that was nice. And then I went over to pour the metal oh, into the open weird. face, oh. uh, you know, sand mold of the jawbone. Oh, it's I didn't have enough. I just already. dribbled a little yeah. and it was, it's it was like done. Uh, oh, well. So, <laughs> I just this dumped it anyway. Aluminum? <laughs> there you go. Oh, nice. An aluminum muffin. So, so, and then, now take a look at this. The stone 
ca casting wow. was a complete failure. <laughs> that was a complete failure. Wow. Wow. Well, that, well, instead of getting a puck, the outline of... I got nothing. I totally destroyed the rock. So, I poured metal on top of this nicely sculpted stone, hoping to get the pattern of it. As you can see, it broke the stone. Oh. <laughs> the pattern work. is all gone now. Yep. Not, not very, very successful. <laughs> You're having a tough day, dear. <laughs> Oh, by the way, tomorrow uh, I have to get this YouTube video up. I'm out of time. So after all of this, I picked up the little piece of dribbled aluminum and actually realized it makes a pretty good handle. And uh, I got my hacksaw out and just cut it up. I to find a piece of uh, aluminum that he melted and made into a blob. to put uh, a bottle in and made a bottle opener out of that. So, may not have made a jawbone yeah, bottle opener. First try. Okay. Yay, it worked! Success. <laughs> Cheers. Why don't you turn it towards the camera so we can see the labels. The good? Metal can opener there that looks a little bit like a dinosaur. See, I'll hold it up. Oh, look at that. Very good. I like the sound effect. <laughs>